We're finally here. The last of this series, we're talking about the best science fiction and fantasy television that we've been able to enjoy through the decades. I started in the 1950s. Today, Zach and I are talking about this decade, the 2020s. So hi there. This is Fantasy for the Ages, the show where father and son sit down and talk about sci-fi, fantasy, and other nerdy things. I'm the son of that equation, Zach. And I'm the father, Jim. And we're glad you're here to join us today as we talk about the best, the top 10 science fiction and fantasy TV shows of our current decade. So since 2020. There's so much available and we're only halfway through the decade. This is just a great time to have content you can watch on TV and maybe a horrible time to have started a show like this. So I don't have as much time to watch TV anymore. Mm. We've got great things that have been coming out, great things that we've enjoyed. And I have to admit, I'm not as useful in this one as I have been in some because I have just been doing life. so much other content, busy. consuming, life got busy. I yeah. don't watch as much TV as I used to. So, so I really have to pick and choose and try to go, what do I think will be worth my time? Yeah. So we, we will see what comes about as we get into the series and talk about all of this. And maybe you just won't even have opinions on some of them, but I think you will, actually. I think, I think you'll have a lot of opinions. Before we jump into the series, I do just want to give a shout out to show sponsor, Your Paper Quest. Have you checked this out yet? Uh, we've got details in the show notes on how, instead of TV, you can get into books. Uh, Your Paper Quest is a subscription service where they'll send out some books by self-published authors for you to enjoy and discover from all different genres. It's always a mystery what they send out. You can get them every month, every two months, or every three months. It's up to you. And there's no commitment. You can hop out whenever you're done. We have a promo code for our viewers. So if you're going to check them out, be sure to use the promo code FANTASY20. And you will get 20% off your first month. And again, if you didn't like it, quit after the first month but i think you'll like it i keep getting books from them it's <laughs> it's filling a bunch of these books right here and eh, you've got a whole library upstairs <laughs> so just check it out and look in the show notes for the details your paper quest now this series keeps getting bigger every time we come to it so guess how many honorable mentions i have this time six no five, five. I just went up one more, but there are five shows I have to mention that I couldn't put on my top 10 for reasons, but I still need to give them a little airtime. But we're not even halfway through this decade. and You've got that many. Oh, oh, my goodness. So much good stuff is out here in fantasy and sci fi. But honestly, I really only have four honorable mentions because the first is my dishonorable mention. Nice. What do we got? The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. I don't get this. I don't know why this show has so much hate. I have enjoyed this show. I've enjoyed the adaptations and the choices they've made. Because you haven't have dove been... into no, Tolkien's I have. lore I've to the read same the degree. Not to the same degree. You, you didn't love I studied it. studied it for a class. You're like, I never even want to read it anymore. The movie replaces everything. This is you. This is what you've said. So you're the kind of person who can love no, this series. I'm sitting in here and going, the people who we have been spoiled to a certain extent of having a lot of adaptations and getting higher and higher standards of what do we want of our adaptations. An adaptation is not necessarily supposed to be directly the book. And if you did want directly the book, do you know how many years it would take you to tell this story? Thousands. Anyways, let me get back to talking about this. It's on here because it's worthy of being mentioned. But I know there's a love-hate relationship people have. My personal experience with the show was I really didn't like a lot of the first season. But the second season was better. Okay? Now, I haven't finished it because I was traveling and your mom was out of town and we've watched this together. So I have to catch up on the last three episodes. But what I've seen of the second season already was definitely better. Still not nailing it for me, but better. Way better than season one. So what are we talking about? Okay, it's set in the second age of Middle Earth, exploring the rise of evil and the creation of the titular rings of power as various factions, including elves, dwarves, and men, navigate their destinies amidst emerging threats. 
The series delves into the rich lore of J.R.R. Tolkien's world and the personal journeys of its uh, characters as they navigate epic battles, political intrigue, confronting ancient evils, and then finding the need to forge alliances to protect their realms. There's a lot to the show. They are drawing on source material, but there's a lot they're making up. They got to fill in the gaps and that's okay. It's an adaptation, mm -hmm. but it does face criticism. And I think some legit criticism for its pacing, for its character development, and for deviating from established lore. There's some people creating the show going, there's no real lore you have to hold to as canon. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so fans have mixed reactions and viewers. Some are like, this is great. And some are, this is trash and burn the show. And that's just how it is. I think it's big budget. It's enjoyable. Oh, it's beautiful. Me. And at the end of the day, it's getting a story told it's getting a point across is it accurate to the book no no <laughs> but if you understand and accept that and instead just look for can they tell a story that can be compelling and pretty to see and eventually by the end of whatever they are, are going to make get the ultimate point across that they need to to have kind of set up what happens later on in this lore i think yes Okay. Honorable mention two goes to the Umbrella Academy. Okay. 2019 to 2024. Now this show follows seven adopted siblings with extraordinary powers who reunite after their estranged father's mysterious death, only to discover they're tasked with preventing an impending apocalypse. As they struggle with family dysfunction, personal trauma, and time travel complications, they face both internal and external threats that challenge their abilities and their fractured relationships. This makes the list specifically because it's just an indicator of the amazing sort of fantasy and sci-fi content that's popping up all over the place. You wouldn't have got a show like this in previous decades, no. but you do now. And more and more of these kinds of shows are really hitting mainstream. They're not fringe shows. This was very popular. A lot of people watching it. This is a great, great time to be watching television that I know was good. I watched some of, and I just never found the time to finish. Fair enough. Honorable mention three. I think you'll be happy with the handmaid's tale 2017 to 2025, meaning it's not done. There's more to come. It's one more season scheduled. The handmaid's tale is set in the dystopian society of Gilead where women are subjugated and fertile women, known as handmaids, are forced into childbearing servitude of the ruling elite. The series follows uh, a handmaid who navigates the oppressive regime while secretly resisting and seeking to reclaim her freedom. And so the show explores themes of power, control, and resistance. Again, more and more shows like this appearing on streaming services rather than major network television, but they're still big hits with, and attract huge followings, giving us just the opportunity for great content everywhere we turn. More and more, the more I see adaptations or read material that Margaret Atwood has written, the more I find that her shtick is really good, really messed up. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't go to any of her works looking to have a good time. Like, <laughs> there you go. It's weird. But good. honorable mention four, Silo, twenty twenty three and ongoing. There's one season out. There's another season coming. We've had some great book adaptations and we've had some lousy ones, but this is one of the great ones. I've got a friend who actually thinks this is tremendously better than the book trilogy. He like hated the book trilogy he watched the show first this was put out by the fledgling powerhouse streaming service apple tv plus and it's it attracted more viewers to their network silo is set as a dystopian future where the last remnants of humanity live in a massive underground silo governed by strict rules to ensure survival in a toxic post-apocalyptic world as engineer juliet investigates mysterious deaths and uncovers long hidden secrets, she begins to challenge the truth behind their existence and the silo's real purpose, leading to revelations that threaten the fragile order of their society. 
Did you watch? I didn't one? end up watching it mostly because I'm waiting until I've read it. And I, I just haven't reached it in my TBR, which is interesting because I'm pretty sure I put it on yours. Uh -huh. I believe you did. And I, I binged right through it. I thought the trilogy was fantastic. And I'm thoroughly enjoying the adaptation. It is definitely an adaptation. They've made changes already. But it's still very true to the key elements of the books. But honorable mention number five, once again, Doctor Who. There we go. I've got to just slip Doctor Who in again. It's still I going. Am it's not still the going massive, strong. I am not the massive Whovian that some are. I have not watched any of Doctor Who this decade yet. I know it's out there. I know it's still going. I did some research, so I was could talk about it knowledge, knowledgeably here. But, I mean, literally, no show has this kind of staying power. And Doctor Who is performing still at high levels. I don't know. The Simpsons is still around, right? Uh, not in our genres here. No. <laughs> but yes, I think it is. It started when I was in college. That's nuts. But this has been around longer. Although it, when it took a 16-year hiatus. hiatus. From 2020 to 2024, Doctor Who underwent, underwent significant changes. Featuring the 13th Doctor, portrayed for the first time by a woman, Jodie Whittaker, as she navigated complex narratives while tackling contemporary social issues. The series also saw the return of showrunner Russell T. Davies, heralding a new era that reinvigorated the franchise with fresh storytelling, familiar, story, familiar characters, and the introduction of new companions. This includes, and I thought this was fascinating, giving us the 14th Doctor, who looked an awful lot like the 10th Doctor. Mm -hmm. I mean, David Tennant, a little older now, I'm plays the bit. Doctor again. And in World, there was a reason that this happened. But then we get the, the previously believed mythical process of by generation that leaves the 14th Doctor to go off on his own and have a fairy book ending, while the 15th Doctor is around now, played by yet another actor, and going on and continuing the story with his own regular stuff that doc, the Doctor... It's all a little timey-wimey. Yes. Fascinating. And a lot of fans really loved that short little element that the 14th Doctor got to play. And the ending. I mean, there were some specials. It was part of the uh, 60th anniversary a whole season. little thing. We got Neil Patrick Harris in there suddenly. The Toy Maker. Wasn't that what he was? Something like maker, that. For sure. Anyways, good stuff. So those are all honorable mentions. With those great shows there. How how can I have other things on the top yeah, let's 10? Let's the actual top 10 now. <laughs> let's see what we got. Number 10, 10. The Mandalorian. 2019 okay. to the present. The Mandalorian follows Din Djarin, a lone bounty hunter in the outer reaches of the galaxy, as he embarks on dangerous missions while protecting a mysterious child known as... The Child. Oh, you want his name? Yes! Grogu. Grogu. It was set known as the child. Set after the fall of the Empire. <laughs> Just so literal. The series blends Western and sci-fi elements, exploring themes of loyalty, honor, and survival in a lawless galaxy. I didn't mention it, but this is part of the Star Wars universe, of course. Grogu has become quite the little phenomenon, not to mention a merch bonanza, which is kind of what Star Wars likes to lean into. Thoughts? This is probably my favorite of all the various Star Wars shows that have happened past, present, maybe future. I would agree. Exactly. Especially since no Star Wars show has shown up in any of my previous decades. And there's no more on this decade. Gotcha. There's Number no nine. Button. The Witcher. 2019 to the present. The Witcher follows Geralt of Rivia a monster hunter with supernatural abilities as he navigates a world filled with magic, political intrigue, and moral ambiguity while seeking his place in this chaotic land. Alongside powerful sorceress Yennefer and destined child Ciri, Geralt confronts personal challenges and dangerous foes, intertwined fates shaping the destiny of the continent. The Witcher series flows from books, that led to video games that then gave birth to this show. And the show is an adaptation, really, of 
both those things. Yes. And there have been choices made in adapting this that have been contentious, but there's still a ton to enjoy in the show. Absolutely. Now, the upcoming season has great uncertainty due to the departure of Henry Cavill over creative differences with Liam Hemsworth trying to step into this Geralt of Rivia character. And it's to be determined whether they can pull this off or this is the death knell of the show. We'll see. Are you feeling optimistic about Hemsworth? Because I'm not. I initially was very like not optimistic. However, that led to the fact that I haven't watched the third season yet. So <laughs> no, I watched season three, but I'll I'm get there. Sure I'll watch season four. Okay, number eight, Wednesday, 2023, to the present. It has been renewed for a second season that's supposed to come out next year. First season was delightfully weird. Yes. The show feels like it shouldn't have worked. Being a spinoff, a very distant spinoff of the Adams Family, but it totally works. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday follows Wednesday Adams as she attends Nevermore Academy, a school for outcasts where she attempts to master her psychic abilities while investigating a series of mysterious murders linked to her family's dark past. As she uncovers secrets about the town and the academy, Wednesday must navigate complex relationships, all while maintaining her signature wit and macabre charm. They just, they cast the show so well, and they really did a nice job of writing for it too. And uh, the acting is spot on. It, it's fun. It's good. There you go. It's fun. Number seven, The Last of Us. 2023 mm. and I'm going. There's only one season out so far. More is coming. This is another show based on a video game series with the TV series following the plot of the games very closely. It's like they took this great video content and just made it into fully fleshed out series and to be fair with this one the games won many awards partially because of their oh, amazing story. story yes so the last of us follows joel a survivor of a devastating fungal outbreak it's a fungal apocalypse as he escorts ellie a young girl immune to the infection across a dangerous post-apocalyptic landscape in hopes of finding a cure Along the way, they encounter both violent survivors and infected creatures, while the emotional bond between them grows, exploring themes of loss, love, and survival in a broken world. Wait, sorry, I thought we already had The Mandalorian on this list. Why is it appearing again? A theme that hits well in this decade, apparently. Apparently, all you need for a successful show is get Pedro Pascal... To escort a child somewhere else. <laughs> Same exact actor. Yeah, you nailed that one. Uh, it's, But it was really done well. I had never played the video games. I knew nothing about it going into it. And just loved the show. I was so impressed. I haven't watched it yet. I know I'll love it. I haven't gotten to it. And you probably haven't played the games either. Because they're not on Xbox. They're, they're PlayStation on... exclusives. Right. Uh, I have not played them personally. I am familiar with them. I've seen them played numerous times. Uh, it's an amazing story that I just, I like, I needed to consume, but yeah. I didn't have access to a platform. Number six, The Boys, 2019 to the present. The Boys is a satirical superhero series that follows a group of vigilantes known as The Boys who take on a corrupt, take on corrupt superheroes that abuse their powers and the corporate entities that support them. As they navigate a world where superheroes are treated as celebrities, the group confronts moral dilemmas, personal vendettas, and the dark underbelly of fame and power, leading to intense and often very violent confrontations. This is, again, an adaptation. There's a comic series mm -hmm. that this is based on. The show is one dark, gruesome, violent, and often quite offensive show it is irreverent at best. And I like it. <laughs> I just, I really like this show. I really enjoy this one. I think it's very well done. I love the actors and how they portray different characters. Uh, it doesn't pull its punches, but also makes some controversial, but also very important statements sometimes. 
And ultimately, it's a show that definitely makes my top 10 because I actually make the time to stop and then watch this one when it comes out. There you go. I don't believe we could have got this show before this decade. It just, it pushes the boundary so far. We definitely couldn't got it before we had direct streaming on demand content. I mean, this is on prime video. No, never would have shown up on a network. No never. normal network would have greenlit this. Yeah. Number five, the wheel of time, 2021 to the present. It's an ongoing series. We only have two seasons out so far. The Wheel of Time, of course, is a favorite of this channel. We're so it happy follows, we got a show. Yes, it follows Moraine, a member of a powerful organization known as the Aes Sedai, who embarks on a quest to find the Dragon Reborn, a prophesied hero destined to save or doom the world. As Moraine guides a group of young individuals from the two rivers, they navigate a richly woven world filled with magic, political intrigue, and ancient prophecies discovering their own distinct destinies in the process. So again, two seasons out, fans are very divided about this adaptation. As you said, we're just, we're thrilled to see one of our favorite shows adapted to television and done with beautiful, big budget, you know, it's it's not cheesy knockoff channel stuff. This is top notch what we're getting here. And it's it's challenging to bring a show like this to the screen well. There's way too much content for television, so they have to make choices to, to make it a little smaller, a little digestible for TV. But these show creators are taking considerable liberties in what they emphasize from the books and what they kind of leave out from the books. They're making the show, they're making the rules. You know, They decide what they want it to look like. Some fans love it and some despise it as ruining their books. In the long run, it's still to be determined whether this is going to make it to the end of the show or whether it will you know, crash and burn. It, it, we just can't tell yet. It's doing all right so far, but I hope the day, we keep getting more. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. it. I enjoyed the second season more than the first season. Kind of like Rings of Power in that sense. There was a lot of choices in the first season. I'm like, what the heck are they doing to my show? I love this series. and You, you can't do that, but they did. Second I'm more okay with better. most of it. Okay. Number four, I'm returning back to Star Trek. And we have Star Trek Strange New Worlds. It started in 2022 and is ongoing. And it's quite good. It follows Captain Christopher Pike and the crew of the USS Enterprise as they explore new worlds and confront diverse challenges in the years leading up to Captain Kirk's tenure as the mm -hmm. captain of the Enterprise. Because we've known about Pike and his yes, journey we met him in the original struggles series. Before. Yep. The series embraces episodic storytelling, combining classic Star Trek themes of exploration, diplomacy, and moral dilemmas, while showcasing the adventures of iconic characters such as Spock and Number One. And it's just really good television. This one, yeah, it, I wasn't expecting much out of it. And I'm like, oh, this show's good. <laughs> so you might need to check this out. I don't think you've I'll seen get this to it. at all. I think I have to really start with the previous one first, just kind of line up my Star Treks again. Getting Understandable. Back into it. Here's another one that you may have missed then from the Star Trek universe. Number three Card. is the card. This one I might watch out of order. I am very excited for this one at some point. And this one is completed. It ran from 2020 to 2023. Star Trek Picard follows the retired Admiral Jean-Luc Picard as he's drawn out of retirement to confront new threats that challenge the values he fought to uphold during his entire Starfleet career. The series explores themes of redemption, legacy, and the impact of the past as Picard assembles a new crew to navigate a galaxy changed by the events following the destruction of the Romulan Empire. Patrick Stewart is an incredible actor. He was a gift to Star Trek when he signed on to Star Trek The Next Generation, and they built the show around him. Mm -hmm. And then all these years later, he comes back to play an old man Picard, and he is an old man Stewart doing this, and he still delivers in this show. We also get to enjoy many of the others from the original Next Generation cast come back to play their characters again, in, in various ways that are tied into the story. And it's just magnificent. To me, this show is 
he as an actor did Logan and went, this was fun. And he went, let's do another old man show. <laughs> Except this time his mental capacities are not nearly as taxed as they are in Logan. Yeah. Anyway. Number two on my list. Stranger Things. It's back. We got season four in this decade and the final season is coming out next year. But just season four alone is worthy of getting it up there at number two. Uh, This show, it continues to delve into the lives of its characters as we've been seeing them grow up while confronting the lingering effects of their past encounters with the Upside Down and then still just growing up. It's not easy to grow up and they've been showing how that worked for people in the 80s. As new threats... Oh, by the way, I grew up in the 80s. So there's a lot that I connect with here. As new threats emerge and old foes return, the group must unite to protect their town of Hawkins and face the increasingly dangerous supernatural forces that threaten their world. The particulars of the plot of season four were intense, gripping, and at times devastating. I know you have not watched it yet, but... Mm -hmm. I and many others are really eager for season five because of season four and where they left us at the end. I'm like, are you kidding me? So, (laughs) yeah. So what gets number one? Yeah, he's got nothing he can say about Stranger Things. No, I haven't watched this part of it. I know it probably belongs, but that's all I can say. Number one, I'm just so happy to have here. House of the Dragon. That's, I was either expecting this as we kept going to end up being number one because you kept not mentioning it or i was gonna be like how did you forget to mention this one (laughs) what house of the dragon came out in 2022 we've got two seasons out it's an ongoing series still Uh, many of us were left a little disappointed with how game of thrones ended house of the dragon is helping us forget about that house of the dragon is a prequel to game of thrones set 200 years before the events of the original series, focusing on the Targaryen civil war known as the Dance of the Dragons. The show chronicles the internal conflicts within House Targaryen as various factions vie for the Iron Throne, leading to brutal battles and political intrigue that shaped the future of Westeros. Through its rich storytelling and its complex characters, the series explores themes of power, loyalty, and the consequences of ambition within a family steeped in legacy and dragons. It's very fitting as a prelude to Game of Thrones. And the the conflict in Game of Thrones that's in the background, you know, that the, the walkers, the white walkers are coming, you know, from over the wall that they basically pay practically no attention to because they're all caught up in things, is still here. This is prophecy they need to prepare, be preparing for, and it's getting completely forgotten because they're so caught up in ambition and power. I have enjoyed this show. I haven't actually watched season two yet because plans haven't lined up to be able to watch it with the people I do. But we'll get to it and binge it in like a day. There you go. There are two things that I love very much about this show. One, I get to see more Matt Smith doing I, a great I job. Coming. I like Matt Smith better here. He does a great job movie. here. Yeah. Two, George R. R. Martin hates this show. He is so upset about the show. He literally, really? yeah, I he literally that. went, Hey, I'm going to talk about everything I think is wrong about this show. And then, like, two <laughs> weeks later, drops this, not a blog, post detailing every little thing that he hated about. He gave. HBO advance warning that he was doing this and nobody stopped him. Nobody, nobody said you can't do this or they just couldn't stop him. Oh, that's funny. And it's really funny to see him be this upset about, Oh, they're getting this wrong or, Oh, they're doing this wrong. And I'm like, I will give validity to your argument again. When you give us another book, if you've got enough time to write all of that, all your grievances on this while you're still collecting the checks, go write us more books. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, love it. I like I love to it. give authors a lot of leeway. But this is one <laughs> author that I'm just fed up with. Right? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. What else would have been on your list then that I didn't mention? Do you got anything that comes up strong in your mind? You hit most of the big things that I think 
need to be mentioned. I mean, th- there are some like places for some honorable mentions because we've had a lot of good shows. I know a lot of people were really looking forward to Shadow and Bone. Uh, I think that one kind of fell yeah. a little bit flat for me. Uh, it, right. it had Same. promise. It wasn't as good. It's on my mind right now because I'm actually reading the Six of Crows duology. Uh, um, I, didn't, I did not even watch the second season of Shadow and Bone. And I, I think a lot either. of people didn't, which is why I got canceled. Because the first one was okay, but didn't suck mm-hmm. me in. On another side of things, you had Wednesday in your list. And I think that got the mainstream attention. And so it deserves to be on there. But there's a different show that has honestly a similar-ish premise. I liked better. Did you ever watch The Order? No. No, I have not yet. I thought that was really good. I really enjoyed that one. Okay. Um, it kind of grabbed the better parts of like Wednesday and then the magicians that I forgot to mention last decade. Into yeah, something I, I watched enjoyed. all of the magicians and I'm kind of sorry I did. Yeah. <laughs> was, Ouch. Yeah, it was, uh, it was okay. <laughs> but honestly, you hit a lot of the things that I've really enjoyed seeing. And I think it's also really telling that neither of us felt the need to put any of the comic shows from this decade into our top 10 list yeah what comic shows were on this decade now anything new i mean this is i think the decade where we get almost all of the mcu shows that have been dropping on disney plus oh yeah wandavision and we didn't put any of those in here (laughs) because they don't really belong for our opinion of what's they're not up here at the top They've kind of started just churning content out. I've enjoyed some, but they don't belong yes. on the top 10 list. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. But viewers, do you agree? Is there something from MCU on they're putting out there on Disney Plus that you think should have been on this list? Or something else? Because there's been a ton of content. I mean, yeah. we highlighted over 15 different shows now here, but there's more. There's and if there's a favorite you would have put... Watched. Yeah, put it in the comment box. We want to hear what do you love. Also, if you want to, you know, nuance on how we ordered our list. If you agree with Zach that, you know, there are things that I have on here that he wouldn't have put nearly in the same spot. If some things are too high or too low, you know, let us know. He, he appreciates when people affirm him and agree with him instead of me. So I also ahead. appreciate when people tell me I'm wrong just because it means we're getting <laughs> the engagement. It means you cared enough to say it. That's right. But that's it. Wow. We've made it through. We've got more great content coming in this decade, I'm sure. So if we did this five years from now, it would be a very different top 10 for the, for now. But Or at least I really hope it would be different. I, I hope I we hope get so. good things. The second half of the decade is just a total downer. That'll suck. <laughs> but, <laughs> but again, thanks for being with us. We do hope you like the episode and subscribe if you haven't done so. But we'll leave you there. Be sure to come back for the more content that we have. It's not going to be this decade list anymore, but we got something coming out nearly every day. You can get used to seeing seeing our shiny faces. (laughs) Thanks for hanging out with me, Zach. This has been fun. Absolutely. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll talk to you next time.